Um, so Prasad, I mean, as as you're um, you know receiving uh, requests for partnerships from uh, technology com- uh, from you know prospective customers, I mean, are you seeing relationship building being part of the value proposition or the business case that um, you know c- companies are putting together for for the types of solutions that you offer? I mean, is is it is it coming up with conversations that you're having with prospective clients? Um, so, you know, I like the way you converted RFP into, you know, re- instead of request for uh, proposals, it's a request for partnerships. Um, one of the key things that we've noticed in the last couple of years and becoming more prominent is um, when customers like Mark, right, uh, Blue Grace, when they, you know, when we first spoke to Mark, the, the questions that he asked are completely different compared to, you know, if we were to do this 10, 15 years back, right? It's not where our platform is today, right? It's not where, where our technology is today. The questions that, you know, uh, leaders like Mark have asked us is, where are you going next? What's on your roadmap? That's the first question that people are asking. The second question that our customers, 3PLs ask us is, how much of an influence do we have on your roadmap? And they are very, you know, transparent about this. They say, you know, this is your product. You're driving this, right? We're not trying to manage that for you, but we want to see how much of our feedback goes into your roadmap. It is, I mean, I, I, this is a day and night difference between where we were 10 years back to where we are today. It, this is such a, an immense, um, I would call it force, you know, let it be the, the new direction of our industry. But this is the change that we are looking for all these years, right? Our customers, 3 ps and brokers asking us, how much of an influence do we have on this roadmap? Because you're solving the, the problems for us. We want to be able to, you know, share our frustration or our direction or issues with you. Uh, you know, um, the same goes with, with Mark and I, right? We spoke about a lot of things. He actually helped us shape one of our uh, our products. You know, one of his his main pet peeves is, is you know receiving calls and uh, from various parties. And he said, "Why can't we solve this problem through broker advantage?" Right. Um, likewise, a lot of our customers actually created that product for us. In many ways, when we spoke to the customers, they said, "Hey, we are, you're solving one part of our 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 uh, freight. Why can't you help us on the other side of it?" Um, that is the direction, right? I mean, we should be able to build these products, you know, block by block together to solve the issues of this industry. And that to me is the biggest change that we are seeing in today's world compared to 10 years back. And so those vendors and brokers that adopt to this new film mindset are the ones that are moving forward rather than those that are, you know, the old school, right? Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, you talk about really the, the pace of innovation and, and the ability to um, participate in that innovation, um, you know, roadmap and in the pay, innovation uh, process. And, you know, I remember, yes, you're right. I mean, when I got started in the industry, you know, 20 plus years ago, I mean, one of the biggest frustrations I would always hear from clients of any kind of enterprise software solution was, you know, we've got this idea for, a, we, we got this need for a capability or we've got a particular issue. Uh, we submitted to the enterprise software vendor and they said, well, you know, um, it's going to be six months to a year before we get our next release out. And, you know, if they weren't a large customer, maybe their input was at the bottom of the list and maybe it would take a year or two before that feature of that capability, you know, was added. And I think, you know, part of it was just the nature of the architecture of the, the way the technology was developed and released back then. But I think when you in this environment today where it's cloud driven, where it's you're talking about web services and, and it's architected for the for the cloud and so forth, um, the pace of innovation is key. And I can see how that is, is kind of an important factor, particularly for the logistics industry, which is changing so rapidly. And there are, you know, logistics service providers like, uh, you know, Blue Grace, you know, they're getting, uh, uh, you know, requests or, or, or uh, you know, wish lists from their shipper clients, as well as their carrier partners. And they're then have to communicate that to you because say, Hey, you know what, this is what our customers are expecting of us. And, you know, we need to, uh, uh, you know, be able to innovate, you know, as rapidly as possible to, to, to meet. Yeah. And Adrian, if I could add one thing to that, it's almost like, you know, we're all 
running a, a you know a sprint race, a sprint marathon here, right? It's a never-ending thing, but it's really high-paced. Like you know, for three PLs too, they're competing heavily on how fast they can scale. Shippers are competing, carriers are competing, vendors are competing. So there's almost like no time for us to say, well, let's take a year or two years to build this product. Um, yeah, you, you definitely have to take a, a uh, you know, an iterative approach and have an approach that is, uh, um, you know, an ongoing continuous improvement process as opposed to, you know, these very long development uh, cycles.